Hello everybody and welcome back to Swamp Dog Games. Today we're going to be asking and hopefully answering the question, is AI the future of role-playing games? Could they assist the game master in creating an adventure? Or could they even replace us? Oh no! Uh, th this video uh, was prompted by this uh, other video on YouTube from this guy Harbinger. I did ask and he confirmed that all of these were AI generated. Uh, it's uh, Legend of Zelda Twilight Princess is an 80s dark fantasy film. I forgot to ask him which AI he used, so I'm assuming Stable Diffusion, but... Um, I, either way, I uh, want to show you a couple of these images from uh, that he uh, typed into the AI to create, and I do highly recommend uh, looking at the full video of AI image that he provides. But I was thinking about AI uh, after watching that and wondering just how far it progressed. The last time I tried watching an AI create any sort of creative expression was way back in the day when uh, Rich from Review Tech USA did a review of the AI that uh, wrote a Harry Potter book. Harry could tell that Voldemort was standing right behind him. He felt a great overreaction. Harry tore his eyes from his head and threw them into the forest. Voldemort raised his eyebrows at Harry, who could not see anything at the moment. Voldemort, you're a very bad and mean wizard, Harry savagely said, Hermione nodding encouragingly. The tall Death Eater was wearing a shirt that said Hermione has forgotten how to dance, so Hermione dipped his face in mud. Ron threw a wand at Voldemort and everyone applauded. Ron smiled. Ron reached for his his wand slowly. Ron's the handsome one, muttered Harry as he reluctantly reached for his. They cast a spell or two, and jets of green light shot out of the Death Eater's heads. Ron flinched. Not so handsome now, thought Harry as he dipped Hermione in hot sauce. This is ridiculous. And wanted to see just how far AI has... Uh traveled since then i'm assuming its writing capability is going to be better than its art but from its art perspective this alone uh is amazing work i'm not an artist but uh in my primitive brain thinking of what effort it takes into art for an ai to understand a creative expression this is actually pretty damn good uh it does though fall way into the uncanny valley however i see this picture and my first thought is the alien chick from mars attacks just before uh she murders martin short in that film uh so it's not quite there yet uh like th this is slightly further down the uncanny valley than that final fantasy film was but uh it's uh, still very interesting what they, it was able to accomplish. Um, as I said, if you want to see everything, I highly recommend watching uh, his video. Link will be in the description down below. A uh, couple highlights, though. Um, this scene here made me think of if you've ever seen the British version of The Lion, Witch, and the Wardrobe, though, of course, this is much better CGI than uh, what they had back in the day. Uh, this one, I'm trying to think what it reminds me of. The, there's another fantasy film that I, I sort of remember head coming out of the water. Maybe I'm thinking of that scene from Excalibur and just superimposing a head on top of it. But uh, this one uh, especially remind, uh, made me think of Labyrinth, the scene right here. And I feel that's what a lot of inspiration that the uh, <laughs> uh, AI ended up pulling uh, ideas from of course link riding off into the sunset this one made me think of the beauty and the beast with sigourney weaver i believe uh i'm trying to remember films off the top of my head that i haven't seen in ages this one made me feel think of uh the dark crystal from jim henson for some reason even though uh the this um scene does it look like it would go belong in that film just the kind of 80s style look of it made me think of that film uh yeah here's another one where of course uh i think of the uh mars attacks lady where is 
the other one. Of course, then here's uh, a nice 80s dark fantasy castle that could easily be out of He-Man. Uh, this, like the wicked uh, stepmother with the just before feeding the poison apple. <laughs> uh, this Bukoblin r really made me think of Labyrinth uh, with this scene. Ah, this is the one I was looking for. This one, as soon as I saw it, my first thought is a properly sized and proportioned Radon from Elden Ring, since I've been playing that game a lot recently. Um, but, uh, yeah, for an AI, th this blew my mind what it was capable of. For a independent creator slash game master such as myself to be able to throw in some suggestions in AI and it comes up with this level of work, this is going to make the uh, independent, scene, uh, independent RPG scene a lot easier. I know everybody's screaming bloody murder about the threat to artists that AI presents. I highly doubt that because an artists can specifically tailor artwork to the demands of the creator much better. This is a very generalist view and it's going to be what you get, uh, what you see is what you get, uh, what you type in is what you get. And you're not going to be able to like specifically tailor it the same way a true artist can. So while I, I do think lower end artists might be at risk, I think the artist profession ain't going away anytime soon because there's too much demand for, um, specific tailored art for the material uh though this does do a pretty damn good job but uh we're here to see specifically what this can do actually in adventure assistance uh for the game master can it replace us yet uh okay i created the account the question is i guess what is Dungeons and Dragons. Dungeons and Dragons D&D is a fantasy tabletop role-playing game in which players create characters to go on adventures in a fictional world. One player, the Dungeon Master, he's not really a player, but sets up the story and acts as the narrator, while the other players control their characters through a series of events and challenges. The game is played using dice, books of rules, and character sheets. It is known for its complex rules. Maybe back in the day, they've oversimplified a little too much, <laughs> uh, I think. And its ability to create uh, immersive, collaborative storytelling experiences. I will correct that statement. I think they created, went a little bit overboard in third edition, 3.5 edition, and the way they've tried to simplify it is not that great if you want like a really good simple um equivalent to dungeons and dragons look up the osr look up uh, swords and sorcery old school essentials or basic fantasy i think those are going to be much better if you want simple uh gameplay that does away with a lot of the bloat that D, &D has suffered through the years uh, d d has been around since the 1970s and has a very large and dedicated community of players around the world so at least the opening statement appears to be grammatically correct. While I could say it's definitely feels um, like ad copy, it at least is able to pull up information. Sorry, I was just thinking, what is the safe distance from... Ocean. If you don't get the reference, um, early in COVID, there was not a glitch, but uh, an accidental exploit of Siri, where when the U.S. government was updating all of its sites to be talk about uh, COVID social distancing and everything they updated the nuclear disaster preparedness stage of their website to include warnings that when you get into the nuclear shelter to still maintain social distancing of six feet i'm like if i'm in a nuclear shelter because of a nuclear expo explosion kind of the last thing on my mind is caring about social distancing at that point uh but they had updated it and because it was the only uh 
distance definition on the page. It tricked Siri and Google and some other like uh, assistance assistant AIs on the phone. Uh, if you would ask the question, "What is the safe?" distance from a nuclear explosion it would tell you six feet because it would pull up the social distancing uh reference uh from the bottom of the page and think that was actually the safe distance and would tell you six feet i wonder if this uh will fall for the same thing this is actually a hell of a lot more information than i expected Okay, I did this for a joke, and I've apparently learned something instead. The more you know... Well, it's good to know that uh, the radius of the fireball is 2.3 miles from a one megaton explosion. Uh, and the radius of lethal radiation is uh, out to about 7.5 miles. I did take a nuclear safety course because uh, of an organization that I worked with that theoretically could be providing disaster response and if necessary to work within the radiological zone. The uh, That's not exactly true because the rate, I'm quoting from memory here, but... Um, like we were as not first responders, but second line disaster recovery people or disaster assistance people, we were excluded from getting within five miles of, well, granted also I'm thinking of a nuclear accident, not nuclear explosion. Um, cause nuclear, uh, fallout can travel with the winds much farther than any of this. Uh, I feel because you can operate outside the five mile exclusions. We could operate within the five to 10 mile exclusion zone, helping assist people out of that. Uh, Cause only like first responders and military people, uh, personnel or the guys who actually work at the plant were allowed within the five mile exclusion radius. Um, okay. Uh, well, we've apparently learned about nuclear explosion. Not as fun as I'd hope, but okay. Back on to today's topic. Could you, Create an adventure for D and whoops, D. Where's the and D? Uh oh, I'm already worried. It's even given me a title. So, sure, here's a short adventure idea for a group of characters at the beginning level. Title, The Missing Heirloom. Synopsis, the characters are hired by a wealthy merchant to retrieve a valuable family heirloom that was stolen from their home. Uh-oh, I am really worried at this moment. The merchant suspects that the thief was one of his own employees and tasks the characters with sneaking into the employee's home to a search for clues. Oh, breaking and entering, great. Characters meet the merchant and accept the job. He provides them with a description of the heirloom and a map to the employee's home. A character must decide on a plan to enter the home and search for the heirloom without getting caught. Act 2. The characters put their plan into action and enter the employee's home. Uh... Okay, yeah. Um. I guess, yeah, grammatically separate. Uh, and eventually find a hidden compartment in the employee's desk containing the heirloom. However, they are about to leave the home with the heirloom. They are confronted by the employee who is armed and demands that they hand over the heirloom. Act 3. The characters must decide how to deal with the employee. They can try to negotiate with him, use physical force to overpower him, or come up with another solution. If they successfully retrieve the heirloom and return it to the merchant, they receive their reward and the adventure is complete. Oh, I'm upset. This is actually a pretty damn good adventure. I'm glad I opened up my text editor to save any ideas that I got because, or this gave me because this is actually a good <laughs> adventure for my next game. Oops. Ignore all of that. Wow. That is uh, actually a heck of a lot better than I expected out of an AI to create an adventure. It created a title, uh, opening synopsis and the three acts. Now, technically speaking, I think this would only qualify as a two act 
play because it would be the, uh, well, I haven't taken theater in so long. Let me shut up there before <laughs> I try to remember how, uh, act structure in a play. I guess this could be three act. Uh, supposedly though, um, open AI is able to take queries, uh, from quick research I did and be able to expand upon other things, reference what it's given you. So I'm going to, uh, ask it, what is the, loom. Uh, yeah, the, the, this is more what I was expecting of, oh, here's an heirloom, but I can't define it for you. It could be anything from rare gemstone to a magical artifact. It is specifically up to the game master. Uh, could... Provide... And sample for the loom. It's okay, so enter does not process it. The adventure I described. Aha! The heirloom is a golden chalice encrusted with diamonds and other precious gems. I'm now having vibes from the last scene of Indiana Jones and Raiders of the Lost Ark. Uh, sorry, uh, The Last Crusade. It was used by the merchant's ancestors during important ceremonies and is said to have magical properties that bring good fortune to those who possess it. The merchant is desperate to get the chalice back, not only for its sentimental value, but also it's worth a large sum of money. The thief uh, who stole the chalice and hid it in their home... Uh, is selling it to a collector. Ooh, this even expounded upon it and gave me more information about the thief. Huh. So it's given us a synopsis for an adventure. It's given us a more direct example of what the heirloom could be. Now, let's ask, could you name the merchant and the employee and provide backstory for them? Marcus Goldwater. Oh, damn, this is good. <laughs> I did not expect this to be able to create such detail uh, stories. I expected to get a lot of gobbledygook, but this is actually amazing capabilities out of an AI. So it's provided us the merchant name, Marcus Goldwater, wealthy and successful merchant who comes from a long line of successful merchant. He's known for a shrewd business sense and his love of collecting rare and valuable objects. The heirloom chalice is one of the most prized possessions and is willing to pay a large sum of money. The employee, Olivia Reed. Olivia has worked for Marcus for several years and has been trusted, been a trusted and loyal employee. However, she's fallen on hard times recently. Oh, this even provides uh, the option of giving you uh, sympathy towards her. Oh, damn. Desperate for money, she decided to steal the chalice and shell it to a collector. She knows if she's caught, she'll lose her job but she feels she has no other choice. Man, this is... I, I'm actually worried. This is extremely good <laughs> information here. So just think about it. At this point, we have mission. We have rough information uh, about how the mission should conduct itself. Now, upon thinking about it, I mean, the, it is pretty straightforward. I mean, there's nothing particularly special of... Uh, okay, the object stolen, infiltrate the suspected thief's home, get confronted, uh, confronted by thief. But the, uh, where it gets into describe the ability to describe the chalice, provide the descriptions of 
the main characters involved in the plot, as well as then reference, uh, keep uh, referencing the item that's the MacGuffin of this adventure and providing you thief, but also the moral quandary. Yes, she is a thief, but she's on hard times. Hmm. We, you could always, as the game master, then expand. Maybe her children uh, need a resurrecting spell because of the plague, maybe? <laughs> or uh, just need to feed her kids and we'll do it. Uh, uh, Les rob style of uh, taking care of the kids. But uh, this is actually a pretty good adventure from the AI. What would be the next good question? I guess if we decide to work with Olivia Reed, we should also get some ideas on the collector. Or, uh, why he could you name the collector? Uh, Yeah, let me leave that there. Elijah Blackwood, a wealthy collector who's obsess uh, yeah, obsessed with collecting rare and valuable objects. He's heard rumors, magical properties, uh, cares about adding it to his collection. Amazing. So this alone right here is sadly all you need for a pretty decent uh, adventure. We have the MacGuffin. We have the rough structure, which, I mean, is all you need uh, for the goals of the adventure. We have the main characters at play. Huh. I need to turn off these ads. <laughs> Alrighty, so that's Elijah Blackwood. Let's ask for it to describe the employees. Small, modest house on the outskirts of town. The exterior of the house is in need of some repairs with peeling paint and a few broken windows. The interior of the house is cluttered and cramped with most of the available space taken up by piles of clothes and other personal belongings. There is a strong smell of grease and spice in the air, indicating that Olivia enjoys cooking. Uh, grease and spices? I mean, the spices in the air, the grease... It's like, are you telling me that I smell burnt bacon and pepper? <laughs> uh, the house only has one floor with a small kitchen, a living room, a bedroom, and a bathroom. The employee's desk where the heirloom chalice is hidden is located in the living room. It even provides me the location of the hidden item for me. Let's try to stump it. Name the town the and its leader. Name the town and its political leader. 
town, Oakdale. Oh, it even provides a description for me. Oakdale is a small, peaceful town located in a rural area. It's known for its rolling hills, lush forests, and charming downtown area. The town is home to a diverse community of farmers, craftsmen, and merchants, as ruled by a mayor and a town council. Mayor Samantha Thompson. It, oh, this is amazing. Serve the mayor. She is loved by the townspeople, known for a strong worth ethic and dedicated yeah, dedication to improving the lives of her constituents. She is respected by the other members of the town council, able to effectively lead and make decisions for the good of the town. I mean, when you compare just how little I've typed in there, this AI will solve anyone's writer's block, apparently. Ooh. Um... Create some landmarks in Oakdale. Oakdale Square is the town's central gathering place, featuring a large green park with a fountain, benches, and a gazebo. Uh, the square is surrounded by a variety of shops, including a bakery, a bookstore, and a general store. The town's weekly farmer's market is held in the square and is also the site of many of the town's festivals and events. Oakdale River, picturesque body of water that runs to the center of town, is a popular spot for fishing, swimming, and picnicking. The river is crossed by a small, charming stone bridge. <laughs> Even provides <laughs> nice little description of the bridge. Wow. And is a popular spot. Aha! Okay, we found its first error. Apparently, we have photography in this fantasy world. Uh, finally, it screwed up somewhere. <laughs> Though, I guess, depending upon if you want to do like a Victorian style adventure, uh, I mean, you could have like early photography in there, but uh, considering most D&D &D is usually like medieval or Renaissance uh, Europe, the, probably that's still incorrect, the ability to take photos. Uh, Oakdale Museum. The Oakdale Museum is a small but well-respected institution that is dedicated to preserving the town's history and culture. Uh, old mansion that was donated by one of the most prominent families. The park description as well. Oh, this is amazing. Uh, let's see here. How much can it do at once? I... Let's see. Oops, bakery, bookstore, and general store. How much can it do at once? Miss Lily Jenkins. Or Jenkins. Jenkins. Lily Jenkins. <laughs> Uh, Mid-50s for 30 years. She's known for her delicious pastries, breads, and cookies. Man, just think, this here is enough. You could write uh, a small adventure summary off of just this information here. Oops. James and Julia Smith, the uh, owners of the store, general store. This is some amazing capability out of this thing. So doing a quick summation, we have the adventure setting. We have the town it's in, the players, a uh, brief description of landmarks that are available in town. Some points, places that could come to light. Uh, let's get a little... 
I wish the names were a little bit more fantasy orientated. Maybe I could. Could you rename all characters with more fantasy sounding names? Uh, merchant, uh, Eldrin. Oh, damn it. It's too good. Well, the general store had apparently decided to, uh, crap out on me, but, uh, actually uh, the last one, cause, the, wait, what was the, cause the merchant was... Goldwater, Reed, and Blackwood. Goldfoot, Reed Weaver, and Blackwood. Okay, so that's more fantasy sounding. Uh, I th think that's all one to one, though. Harold Thompson? Yeah. Why did that fail? Oh, damn. Let's go really <laughs> fantasy. Okay. Okay, so. Gladriel Coldleaf, Olivia Shadow Dancer, Elijah Shadow Blade, Samantha Moonstone. Okay, yeah, these are fantasy sounding names. Though I would love to know why it won't do it for the last couple. Hmm. Maybe it just gets confused if you provide too many um, demands at once. I don't know why I'm being polite to it. Uh, asking, could you please? Uh, okay, so asking it to provide more fantasy sounding names for the bakery, bookstore, and general store. Uh, Mrs. Sylvie Rose Petal, Mrs. Uh, Marie Starweaver, Mr. and Mrs. Yuan, and Elena Oakleaf. This is not the time for someone uh, who has dyslexia to try reading fantasy names, apparently. Okay, this is actually pretty good. Actually, before I do that, I I'm now, like, got this paranoia. Is this stealing names off the uh, is this actually creating this from scratch or is there somewhere a name Starweaver uh, somehow I don't think it's stealing this from 4DK okay uh, could you dis Describe ah, the town history. Pi uh, Oakdale was founded over 150 years ago by a group of pioneers who are seeking a new life in the western frontier. The town was named after the oak trees that grew in abundance in the area. The town grew slowly at first as the pioneers struggled to establish farm and businesses. However, as years passed down, uh, passed and the town grew, it became a hub for trade and commerce in the region. Oakdale prospered thanks to its fertile land which is ideal for agriculture and its strategic location along the river which made it a natural transportation hub uh just rivers have always been historically huge uh 
tactical and economic strategic uh, powerhouses, rivers, uh, because trade along those rivers um, is a huge deal. And the fact that it's able to pull all of that uh, coherent backstory and actually very accurate to reality uh, is pretty good. Uh, the one thing we are missing is, well, actually we're missing a couple things, but just because the inner count in me, what is the local tax rate for, actually, what are the taxes in Oakdale? Uh, <laughs> oops. Uh, I meant it to generate the different types of taxes, because uh, you would have, for instance, uh, in lots of uh, ye olden communities, you would have taxes to, for entering the city, taxes on uh, bringing weapons into the city, taxes on perhaps bringing more dangerous uh, animals, or if you were um, not a citizen of the town, you would have taxes for that. Uh, is what I was actually hoping for. Um, create. <sighs> Have it create some taxes for Oakdale. Uh, okay, property tax. Okay, sales tax. I mean, those are pretty basic. Income tax. I mean, it's just quoting basic taxes. Okay. Uh, business tax. Yeah. This isn't what I was looking for. Um, got hotel taxes. Okay. Uh, what are some taxes that were... During the mid Ugh. Ah Network error 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 Will Robinson Let me save this though, even though that isn't that helpful for what I was looking for. Yeah, that's what I'm... Oh, well, I guess... Uh... Can we cancel? Huh. Okay, there we go. Okay, there we go. So whatever that network error was, uh, poll tax, uh, not sure if that's the correct, now I mean poll tax has been, uh, had a couple different definitions throughout the years, but I don't think it ever applied to just heads and households. I think it, uh, well, I mean, modern understanding of poll tax is usually, uh, a tax to be able to vote, which was designed to, uh, keep people from being able to exercise, uh, their right to vote, but, uh, custom duties, tithes, yeah, th this is what, uh, excise tax, this is more like what I was expecting, okay. Some more fantasy-styled taxes. Actually, though, I should ask, uh, who is the local law enforcement? 
Enforcement. Okay, so it still needs uh, some t contextual clues. Okay, for the, who is the local law enforcement for Oakdale? <sighs> I mean, you were just describing Oakdale above. Is there another Oakdale you think I'm referencing? Hmm. Maybe. Who is the local sheriff for Oakdale? There we go. Okay, I was hoping a little bit more. Okay, uh, what is the legion in Oak Dale? Wonder if it's broken. Create a local Oak Dale. There we go. The Cult of the Rising Sun. Mm. Even giving us a little bit of history. All right. Oops. <laughs> no, I do not want that all typed into there. This is what I'm looking for. Okay. So I guess I got to change the wording to create instead of what is. Uh, create. Local law enforcement. It's not grammatically correct, but Oakdale Police Department. <laughs> okay. Uh, uh, create a fantasy style law enforcement agent. Oops. Create a fantasy style. Law Enforcement for Oakdale. Okay. There we go. The Order of the Silver Star. <laughs> this town ain't big enough for the two of us. So, even in fantasy, it's going to go, let's give all of our agents a silver star, huh? Ain't half bad, actually, but. So, man, uh, just think, we are now at 134 lines of text. Uh, gr granted, that uh, doesn't, it, because it's treating this all as one line. But, so we've got an adventure, the history of the major participants, history of the town, history of some major people uh, in the town. Uh Create a leader for the Order of the Silver Star. Lady Arya Lightbringer. Oh, this is nice. Though I feel like this is partially a copy paste of the mayor. Out of curiosity, though, uh, I've noticed that it seems to be heavily weighted towards creating, or at least it seems like heavily weighted towards creating uh, female uh, characters, because we've got one, 
two, three, four. Okay, five females and one, two. Okay, maybe not. Uh, it's definitely weird that it feels like it was more, but yeah, it's five female characters and four male characters. That seems a little bit odd for a fantasy town, but... Uh, huh, not too bad, I guess. It is roughly... Well, it's a little weighted, but uh, that could just be because of the small sample size I'm running off of right now. Um... What's the last thing to really make a town complete? I know. The re uh, no, we did the religion. Uh, so, yeah. Cult of the Rising Sun. Uh, create a leader for the Cult of the Rising Sun. Priestess of Maria Sunflower. <laughs> it's definitely fantasy sounding. Uh, okay. High Priestess of Mara Sunflower. Okay. Uh, now, though, we're slightly more weighted towards female characters than male, but okay. Alrighty. Well, this is our fantasy adventure. I guess I will include this as a document somewhere. Uh, I'll save this as a text file, and I might clean it up a little bit, but uh, I'll add it to my locals. So if you go to thekendigreport.locals.com, you'll be able to find this uh, document that we created from... Uh, what AI did I use again? I just had it in front of me. Uh, open AI, the chat GBT AI. And, uh, we, uh, uh, if you want to download the responses for your own D and D adventures at home, uh, a little rough around the edges in a couple places still, but I am still amazed that this was effectively able to create a pretty decent little backstory and adventure for us to use and is playable with some uh, flavor text around the adventure as well. If you have any sort of writer's block, uh, open AI is definitely uh, the place to go to remedy that. That's for sure. This was uh, quite an amazing preview of just the possibilities of where AI has come from. Uh, again, if looking at that segment from Rich at Review Tech USA, how it wrote uh, that story about Harry Potter and instead what it's able to do here with some prompts from the player. This is some pretty accurate or, or good material that if you're ever stuck in a writer's block and need a little bit of help, the uh, chat gbt could be the right source for you so we'll definitely be taking a look at this later some more advanced options that could be here but uh this is definitely a keeper and a must-have tool i believe for a game master dungeon master at this time ai is definitely going to help me in some of my writer's block let's actually see how much I can force it to work. Create a set of d and inspired combat rules. At this point, it's just quoting D&D uh, &D combat rules. 
back at me instead of creating something from scratch. Okay, so not that. Great, but the fact that it's able to actually decipher this. Yes, first aid and healing check. This is definitely modern uh, Dungeons and Dragons right here. What is Crimson Skies uh, from Fasa? Wow, I am bloody amazed. This is the fact that it's able to actually pull this from the internet pretty quickly and accurately. Held it right over there. Okay. So asking to tell me the difference between Twilight and Twilight 2000. Which, if you don't know, Twilight is sparkling, uh, moody teenagers, and Twilight 2000 is a gritty World War Three style RPG. Uh, actually, I meant the film. This is telling me something else. Twilight is a science fiction RPG set in the distant future to colonize the stars. Right? Huh? Yeah, Twilight 2000 description is pretty much right. Uh... Twilight science fiction RPG. Twilight 2000? Yeah. Huh. This is maybe quoting Twilight Imperium? I'm not sure. Okay, this is pretty good. Oh, well. Uh, as I said, this is a pretty good look-see at what AI can do for your RPG game. The fact that it was able to uh, pretty accurately respond to my prompts once I got a feel for create versus describe. <laughs> uh, this is pretty scary about the what the, the future looks grim for game masters. <laughs> One day that uh, horrid VTT from Hasbro might just uh, try to eliminate Game Masters altogether. That's how they'll solve their Game Master problem, huh? Oh, well, thank you all for watching. I uh, hope you enjoyed watching AI and its current capabilities and what it can do to assist the Game Master. If you'd like to see more videos like this, please hit subscribe down below, as well as you can go to my social media at thekendigreport.locals.com or the shorthand version Tango Romeo India Papa 118, that is T-R-I-P 118.tv, and that will take you to my locals where... You can look at ad-free versions of my videos, uh, with the exception of the Humble Bundle shilling. You can chat with me directly, see what other multitude of things I'm currently involved in besides RPGs. That's my one-stop shop for all of the social media in my life. Thank you all for watching. Hit subscribe if you want to know when more videos like this come available. Don't be afraid to comment. Leave your thoughts on AI and the, the future horror for game masters what the state of the world looks like see y'all next time and i know I, i've been complaining about needing a catchphrase create a catch phrase to sign off on a youtube 
video. Yeah, okay. <laughs> oh, I like this. Don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe. And until next time, may the dice always roll in your favor. I say that, though, and I feel like I'm actually... No, it's may your all your dice be 20 is from uh, Dungeon Craft is what I'm thinking of. Okay, this is my new catchphrase. Thank you, AI, for creating this for me. Make sure I'm not stealing this first, though, because I feel like I am. May the dice be in your favor, mini floor sign Etsy. Okay, so... May the dice always roll in your favor. Okay, either way, I'll be using a kind of version of this. Might be just stealing it from the from this poor Etsy <laughs> shop. <laughs> okay. See y'all next time. And don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe. And until next time, may the dice always roll in your favor. <laughs>